Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Scary Mysteries. Today's video is one of my favorite topics because it covers a wide range of stories, each one more creepy and mysterious than the next. We're going to cover a strange vanishing of two sisters, the Michigan Triangle, which if you don't know is similar to the Bermuda Triangle, and there's some weird stuff going on there. We'll also look into a family that set out to prove that reincarnation is actually real, the very suspicious death of Annie Borgeson, as well as a massacre that occurred at a lake. It's a weird episode, and if you're new, on our channel we go deep into scary mysteries from all around the world, and we aim to cover stories that you've never heard of. So if you aren't already subbed, then please click that button. As always, we're putting out three new videos every single week for you to enjoy that dive into some of the craziest stories not only from the past, but also with what's happening right now in the world. So stay informed with all the weird and strange things by hitting that notification bell. Now, here are five mysteries so strange you won't believe they're real. Number five, superstitious parents prove reincarnation is real. One of the most bewildering mysteries that the human mind has tried to deal with is the concept of reincarnation. The term, which literally means to take on the flesh again, fascinated the most ancient of civilizations. Surprisingly, the same belief was still carried over by some of the most educated and informed individuals of today. Meet V. Purushottam Nadu, an associate professor in the chemistry department at the Government Degree College in Madanapal, India. He has a master's in science and a doctorate in philosophy. His wife, Padmaja, is as academically accomplished as well. She has a master's in mathematical science and also works at the same institution as her husband. However, neighbors and colleagues describe the couple to be deeply superstitious and very spiritual. They were reportedly followers of Mur Baba, an Indian spiritual master who claimed to be the avatar or God in human form. One of his teachings was the concept of reincarnation to which the husband and wife are apparently very passionate about. In fact, they were so obsessed about it that this soon became a reason for grief and sorrow within the family. In January of 2021, the police rushed to the Nadu residence after they received a call from neighbors who complained of torturous noises coupled with loud screams and chants coming from their house. Upon arrival, authorities were shocked to find the dead bodies of the couple's two daughters, 27-year-old Alekia and 22-year-old Sai Divya. Both women were bludgeoned to death with dumbbells and their heads cracked completely open. There, they also saw Pirashatham sitting on the couch, looking like he was in a trance. Meanwhile, Padmaja was found staring at the wall, and when asked, she told police that they were in the middle of a ritual that would miraculously bring their dead daughters back to life. As to why they did it, the mother said that evil had entered her daughter's head and so they had to break it open and free the girls from possession. Police observed that despite the bizarreness of the incident, the two academics seemed to be so certain of what they were saying. Following the parents' arrest, they were then sent to a mental hospital for assessment and diagnosed before being charged with double murder. Needless to say, doctors found the parents suffering from delusion and psychosis, findings that anyone would find hard to refute. Number four. Strange Vanishing of Sisters Rosalind and Fauna Bell Unexplained disappearances are the type of cases that not only baffle authorities, but also haunt the family and relatives that are left behind. It's even worse when they go unsolved for decades on end. The mystery behind the strange vanishing of sisters Rosalind and Fauna Bell continued to puzzle the minds of police long after it happened 36 years ago. It all began on a beautiful summer day 
on July 25, 1985. Roslyn, who was then 18, and Fawn, just 15, were last seen at their home in Bethany, Oklahoma. On that same day, the elder sister told her parents that she was going out to look for a job. Their brother, Otto Abel Jr., came home and overheard the girls talking as they headed out of the door. He could still remember one of the girls saying, hurry up, they're waiting for us down the street. This was supposedly the last time that he ever heard his sister's voice. One of the immediate points of inquiry in the ensuing investigation was the person or people whom the sisters had referred to as they made their way outside. Was it someone they personally knew? No one could say. At the height of the investigation, detectives from the Bethany Police Department believed that there was no evidence of foul play. However, family members noted that the two were fond of hitchhiking. Back in the 80s, hitchhiking was a popular hobby, especially among young girls. As it was often the case, hitchhikers would usually get free rides from strangers going to another town, sometimes even across the country. Because of this, many disappearances were often attributed to hitchhiking activities. It wouldn't come as a big surprise then if police considered this a possibility. One of the few names that they looked into was a serial killer and kidnapper named Royal Long. Long had been known for abducting girls who usually hiked in pairs. In fact, he became the primary suspect for the abduction of Charlotte Kinsey, and Cinda Pallet in September of 1981. Both girls lived in Oklahoma City, which isn't that far from Bethany. But upon further inquiries, they found that Long was already in custody in Wyoming when the two Abels went missing, and this got him off the hook. Meanwhile, investigators got a tip from Roslyn and Fawn's half-sister, Laura Lee Nelson, who told them that their common father, Otto Abel Sr., may have had something to do with the disappearances. Nelson revealed how she and her own sister were kidnapped by their father and brought to Oklahoma in 1963. Aside from that, he also raped her countless number of times when she was very young. Despite this report, Mr. Abel was never considered a suspect in the disappearance and their father is now deceased. Through the years, though, there have been other speculations that have come up regarding their disappearance. Sadly, there isn't that much information to back up the theories. Meanwhile, the big question continues to persist. Did the Abel sisters run away from home? Did they hitchhike and get picked up along the road by people with evil intentions? And could it be true that their own father had something to do with their vanishing? Unfortunately, we're not closer to any answers, and it doesn't seem like any are coming soon. Number three, suspicious death of Annie Borgeson. In 2005, a woman was found dead on a beach. Initially ruled to be a suicide, subsequent inquiries into the case have pointed to something much more disturbing, the kind that would involve national interests. On December 4th, 2005, a man who was walking along the shore of Prestwick Beach in Scotland found a young woman dead washed up ashore. He called the police who quickly ruled it as a suicide by drowning. The deceased was identified to be 30-year-old Annie Borgeson, who was a Swedish national who had been working in the hospitality industry in Edinburgh, Scotland. Despite the initial ruling, Annie's family believed there's something sinister at play. When they decided to look into it themselves, they uncovered some odd things that are too hard for them to deal with. For instance, when Swedish undertakers received the woman's body, they found several bruises around her head and neck. There were other marks on her body as well, which the official records from the Scottish authorities failed to indicate. What troubled the family even further were the unanswered questions regarding Annie's last day. On the weekend when she died, she was seen on CCTV, leaving the Prestwick International train station and entering the airport terminal. 
After what was only about five minutes, she left the vicinity without ever checking in for her flight to Sweden. By the time she was found on the beach, police recovered her passport, wallet, and some books stuffed in a bag beside her. Then, when the Borgeson family began their own digging, they began to hit a wall of secrecy. Scottish authorities refused to release the tissue samples that could have helped clarify the cause of death. Going through her phone and email records, they also discovered that everything on it had been deleted. Even the people who corresponded with her prior to her death noticed that their phones failed to register any of the calls or texts that they made with her. With nowhere else to turn, they approached the Swedish Foreign Ministry for help. The office did provide them with sets of never-before-seen correspondence with their Scottish counterparts. This was with regards to the investigation on Annie Borgeson's mysterious death. However, the files were as good as nothing, considering that they had all been classified as secret. When asked about it, Swedish officials seemed to change their tone, saying that a full release of these sensitive pieces of information may actually harm national interests. The Borgeson family continues to campaign for full disclosure regarding the investigation. Petitions have also been made for the release of their daughter's post-mortem photographs. With the apparent involvement of two national governments in what is supposed to be a complex web of secrecy, one couldn't help but ask, who really is Annie Borgeson? Was she perhaps more than a hospitality worker? Did she engage in jobs that are, shall we say, clandestine in nature? These questions still persist in the same way that the mystery behind her death does. Number two, baffling disappearance of Stephen Kubaki. Unless you've been living under a rock, you probably must have heard of the Bermuda Triangle in the western part of the North Atlantic Ocean. It's said to be an area where a number of aircrafts and ships have mysteriously vanished under strange circumstances. In the United States, there's also a weird place known as the Michigan Triangle. This area stretches from Ludington to Benton Harbor, Michigan, and on to Minnetowic, Wisconsin. There have been a lot of bizarre instances that surround this place, such as the unexplained disappearance of a schooner named the Thomas Hume and a cargo ship called Rose Bell. Both of them vanished on Lake Michigan, never to be seen again. Similar stories have emerged through the years, but one that really captures the attention and imagination of many pertains to the disappearance of Stephen Kubaki and his eventual return. Kubaki was a student at Hope College in Holland, Michigan, who decided one day to embark on a solo cross-country ski trip. The journey was supposed to last for a couple of days, but on February 21, 1978, a 23-year-old was reported missing. Local news reports indicated that a group of snowmobilers and Sagatok spotted his skiing equipment abandoned together with his backpack. A search and rescue operation was then immediately conducted. The only clue they had was a 200-yard trail of footprints in the snow that led past the edge of the lake where it ended abruptly. Investigators were then quick to surmise that Kubaki had somehow fell into the lake and drowned. Numerous searches were made in the depths of the water and the surrounding area, but no one had any clue of where he could have gone. It seemed that he just stepped off the face of the earth, and that is until more than a year later on May 5, 1979, when he reappeared in Pittsfield, Massachusetts. When asked, he said that he had no memory of the previous 15 months. He told reporters that he suddenly woke up in a meadow 40 miles away from his father's house. He also found himself wearing clothes that were not his own, along with a small bag containing maps and memorabilia, none of which were his. Despite the pressures from the public, Kubaki remained tight-lipped of whatever happened to him when he vanished. 
As expected, his case became popular online, especially in communities that deal with the paranormal. They strongly believe that he was a victim of the anomalies that reportedly take place in the infamous Lake Michigan Triangle. Number 1. Unsolved Massacre at Lake Anessi If there's anything that history can tell us, it's the idea that humans are more than capable of doing awful things to one another. In the hierarchy of killings, perhaps massacres can be placed on the top of this list. It's even more shocking if entire families are slain and the culprit remains free. On September 5, 2012, Saad Al-Hili and his family took a vacation in France. The 50-year-old, who was originally from Iraq, brought along with him his wife, Iqbal, who was 47 years old, and their two daughters, Zanab and Zina, then seven and four years old, respectively. Joined by Iqbal's 74-year-old mother, Sahala Laf, the crew decided to take a scenic drive to the village of Chevelin and went straight through the so-called Route Forestier de Mali de la Comdere. It's a big question why the family took the route, considering that it didn't have a pleasant drive by view. Investigators also couldn't consider mountain hiking as their aim since the entire family were not dressed for the activity. It was around four in the afternoon of that same day when they arrived at the southern end of Lake Anessi. Then all of a sudden the sound of gunfire was heard and the gunman reportedly fired 25 shots in total. It all happened so fast that the al Halis didn't have time to escape. The husband and his wife and mother each received three shots to the body and two to the head. Sylvain Moliere, a cyclist, was unlucky enough to be in the wrong place at the wrong time as well, and he too was gunned down, shot seven times. If there's any consolation to this tragedy, it's the fact that the two young girls managed to survive the attack. Zineb was shot and suffered a head wound, but was able to live through it. Her younger sister, meanwhile, had safely hid under the legs of their mother. One of the very first angles that the police looked into was Mr. Al-Hali's past. It was found that his father had once been in conflict with then reigning Iraq dictator Saddam Hussein. This prompted the older Al-Hili to flee the country and seek refuge in the UK, where his son had eventually become an aeronautics engineer. There were rumors saying that the deceased had been working on a sensitive project at the time of his death. Authorities considered this as another potential motive for the killing. There were several other leads being looked into as well. For instance, they suspected that this could be the work of a lone, psychologically disturbed killer. Interestingly, the weapon used in the attack was a pre-World War II Luger P06 semi-automatic pistol. Definitely not the type of gun to be utilized by a professional assassin. Five years had already gone by, and in 2017, the French police said that they still had no working theory to explain the massacre. It was even more troubling that they still haven't arrested anyone in the case. After nearly 10 years, in 2021, French authorities said that the investigation in the Anessi massacre continues. New leads have been presenting themselves as of late, but the details are still under wraps. And so, the mystery persists. Were the Al-Hili family victims of a targeted shooting? Or did they just happen to be in the wrong place at the wrong time? So that's going to do it for this episode of Scary Mysteries. If you guys have any story suggestions, then you can reach us on our Scary Mysteries Facebook page. And if you want to see some really creepy stuff that's too hardcore for YouTube, then you want to go to our Patreon page, where every Thursday we're putting out a new video. Plus, over there, you can get involved and pick what videos we're going to watch over here. Thanks so much for tuning in. I'll see you soon.